Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to the video. We're going to be discussing a whole slew of Halo 5 news. Because, while well, the game's pretty close to release now, and so the internets are abuzz with excitement. I guess the first thing we should be tackling is the fact that now Halo 5 is being touted to be exclusive to the Xbox One. So, just yesterday, 343's Frank O'Connor made a statement that there was a possibility Halo 5 Guardians would be coming to the PC, but it was a bit of an ambiguous statement. However, since then, Aaron Greenberg, who is of course the marketing head, has followed up with this and clarified that, you know, his statements don't actually mean that Halo 5 is going to be released on the PC. And in a rather short tweet, he said, and I quote, This is not true. Game is being made exclusively for Xbox One. That was it. So if you're hoping for a clarification as to why suddenly there's a change of heart, or why previously Frank had said something differently, or hinted something differently, we don't really know. So it's a bit of ambiguity, but that's it. And unfortunately, it kind of leaves us in a bit of a weird position, because we know that Fable Legends, Killer Instinct, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Sea of Thieves, and other titles are confirmed for the Windows 10 PC. <laughs> and I say it in that respect, because obviously if you don't want to upgrade to Windows 10 for whatever reason, you're pretty boned. And that are a lot of hints at the Master Chief Collection and other titles deep but of course a lot of gamers were really hoping for halo 5 guardians because halo the original pc release was really well received on the pc and a lot of a lot of gamers absolutely loved it in fact it lived on for quite some time uh, in the hearts and mind of gamers my personal take on it is it's actually really difficult to know what the impression are there's a couple of different ways you can take this one aaron is trying to do get, uh, damage control which is possible, and Microsoft, for example, are planning to release the game in, let's say, two years' time on the PC, or a year's time, or six weeks' time on the PC. We just don't know. Second option is that he's actually legitimately being honest. There was no plans, and it was simply Frank misspoke, or perhaps just got confused, or maybe said, hey, you know what, we don't know that it's never going to come on, maybe in the future it will. Third option is Halo 5, they've not made a decision, but the possibility is another Halo, for example, the Master Chief Collection, will be coming to the PC. So at the moment, just pretty much pick one from thin air and uh, stick it onto your wall, because your guess is unfortunately as good as mine. Meanwhile, completely in a different take of the whole Halo situation, in terms of the... Uh, development and releases we're going to be discussing the frame rates no this is not a negative thing about the frame rates no they've not suddenly announced that it's going to be running at half the frames per second but there has been a rather interesting uh, series of exchanges between various members of the team beyond forum with the studio head of 343 has been rather rather boisterous in his defense at 60 frames per second of Halo 5. Holmes responds so that frame rate directly impacts the moment-to-moment -moment connection between the player input and what is drawn on screen. It is logically incoherent for you to complain on one hand about extra frames of animation drawn between actions in the game and then turn around and state that frame rate has no meaningful impact on gameplay beyond visual comfort. That is factually incorrect. Now, if the point you're trying to make is that faster response times won't improve your experience with a game that brings you no joy, that is a coherent argument. Everyone has their own subjective opinions about stuff, which I think, to be totally honest with you, is a fair point. However, that's not the end of it. You'd think it was the end of it, but no. The user comes back and states that if we are pitting a 90 FOV player against a 75 FOV player, you might have a point, albeit an extremely thin one, but we're not. Everyone gets 60 FPS in Halo 5, just like everyone gets 60 FPS in CEMCC. But it's still a pile of dog shit and doesn't cover up any of the design flaws. You know what though, that's fine, we can drop the FOB analogy. That still does a bolster the idea of someone playing and 60 FPS is going to be able to beat someone that's, uh, that's 30 FPS, all other things being equal. Hmm... That's pretty much the synopsis of it. At the moment, the internet wars are still raging. 
but it is kind of amusing. However, I completely and utterly agree in this case with Josh, because it is a simple case of, well, you know, the game was developed with 60 FPS in mind. That's one of the reasons that split screen mode was not included. It wasn't because the developers were being all mean to you, it was simply a fact that they designed the game from the ground up with 60 FPS in mind with the excellent response times with the best visuals that they could get from the rendering time of course that 60 FPS gives you. Obviously regular viewers will know and I imagine many of you will know who are technically inclined that the faster the frame rate that you're targeting the less time the GPU has to draw each frame of animation. Pretty simple stuff. In this case, 60 FPS obviously puts a greater toll on Xbox One's resources than if the developers were aiming for, let's say, 30 frames per second, in which case they could go for, say, better visuals. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of an amalgamation, but I think it's worked rather well. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.